Hi guys, welcome back to part two of this two-part video about designing a modeless all on X case. If you haven't watched part one, please click in the link of the description. I highly recommend that you're watching it before you're continuing with this video. This video has three sections and every section is important. So I'm going to recommend that you watch it all the way to the end so you don't miss any important steps. The first section is about designing an Auto X case very quickly. The second case is to align a pre-up that you scanned in if you don't have any tissue landmark. You cannot align it to your jaw scan. In the last section, we're gonna make a fast copy of your pre-up that you can then either mill or print and that's completely up to your workflow and what works best in your individual situation. If you are new to this channel or you clicked on this video by accident, welcome. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any further videos. Please give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and if you want, leave a nice comment. That will help the channel and I can make videos like this in the future. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So at this point, we ended up in part one. So we're going to go into the next step. And the whole secret here about this whole workflow is the OptiSplint scan flex. You can use it as a verification jig. You can use it as a scan body. And you can choose a variety of different systems, implant systems, you can align it really nicely in ExtraCAD. I believe they're coming out with a three shape version as well. I'm not quite sure how this will work in three shape because there are so many different steps you need to follow and to arrange the models and the files. So I'm going to be surprised to see. I'm going to be really excited to see how it comes out in three shape. In the chain mode, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to align my last molars to the end position of the pre-up last molars. I'm going to align those in the occlusal and in the contact position. Then I'm going to move the interiors forward and make sure that the little discs are locked in. If they're not locked in, then the whole arch is moving. Now I'm going to make sure that the CJ of the design is equal with the CJ of the pre-up because I want to make sure that we see the right amount of red and the right amount of white. So we're going to see the right amount of tissue and the right amount of teeth. The symmetry mode works really well if you want to design it really really fast so all the teeth are moving actually in the same position here what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure i'm going to adapting the occlusion i'm going to adapt to the basal position so i'm going to cut the pontex basically after that i can prepare everything to mark the outline of the tissue so in this step i'm going to mark or I'm going to draw where my borders of the tissue are. I'm going to try to stay away a little bit, a millimeter or so, from the actual abutment so that the whole interface doesn't get too thin, that the material doesn't get too thin in this area. And what could happen is that the tie bases break out of the PMMA. Here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the tissue anatomically correct. I'm going to add material around the tie bases so there's sufficient material around it. So the rule of thumb is it's around three millimeters. Don't quote me on that, but it should be around three millimeters around the tie bases to have a stable connection there and that the tie bases don't break out. I'm going to adjust the CJ on the front teeth because they seem to be a little bit higher compared to the canines. You can do it with an anatomic tool. Then you can smooth it out and you can add a little bit 
to the points where you have the minimum thickness compromised. The most important step is to create a convex surface at the underside of the prosthesis. I'm going to do this with the smoothing tool and by holding the shift button on the keyboard I can create a flat smoothing, like a strong smoothing area. Now I'm going to bring in the pre-up, in this case the prosthesis, the design is a little bit further out than the pre-up, so with the shift button holding down i'm selecting the add and remove tool so i can remove it then with the smoothing tool i'm going to smooth the entire surface make sure i don't have any minimum thickness compromises i'm going to go to the middle to the fine brush and i can then mark or recontour areas where I over smooth the area and here I'm going to make the boundary or the margin or the neck of each tooth. I'm going to redefine it a little bit by holding shift so it's subtracting. Now that's a little trick I, I used to do or I'm using to do is I'm using a Y to create the root between the teeth. So it's an upside down Y, and I'm going to do this Y in between every tooth. And after I'm done carving it in, I'm going to go to the bigger tool and just smooth in. I'm, I'm smoothing the entire area out, and this will give me a good root shape. You can you can spend a little bit more time if you want to do this, but most of the time people are recontouring it in green stitch anyway. But this will give me a good starting point. Um, school channels, I click off, and then I'm going to merge everything. That's the final prosthesis I can then mill or, or print. In this case, what we did, we had our pre-op and we had a good scan of the tissue landmarks that we could align to our jaw scan. But what if you don't have a scan like this? So what you can do is you, you can take these, these little scan flags and you pop them into the motor units and scan the entire prosthesis inside out. Then you're going to load it into your ExoCAD scene. And what you want to do now is you want to align these scan flags to the scan flags of the OptiSplint. And it's really easy. You're going to go to Tools and to align meshes and here you're going to pick a couple of reference points usually the best option is to pick of course the scan flags you're going to pick a couple of points here i'm going to, i'm going to use more than usual perform alignment best fit matching and then you have your pre-up aligned to the entire situation let's say you can use this if your tissue is compromised right after surgery or you don't have a good tissue scan you can use this method i'm going to remove everything here so it doesn't bleed through the pre-op and I, I can then adapt it to the pre-op i can then save it out i call it in this case wax up scan and i'm going to save it out in the same coordinate system then i can Go to add and remove mesh i'm going to select here wax up scan and then i can load in this wax up scan and it will align in the exact same position as my, my pre-op i can then treat this wax up scan as a regular design free, i can frame form it and i can go all the steps that i would usually do with the design I hope you really liked this video and you learned something from it. Um, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you get updated on all the latest videos. Please give it a thumbs up, leave a nice comment and I see you next time.